Parliament resumed sitting with the swearing-in of new member, the MP for Abuakwa North, Madame Gifty Chum Ampofo. Please impound pirated wax prints at Medina in Accra. Fight ensues in South African Parliament after attempt to stop President Jacob Zuma from speaking. Libya's Coast Guard intercepts a small box carrying more than 100 African migrants. This is GBC 24 and GTV and it's time for News R. My name is Yoko Kwakutre and you're welcome. My name is Micheline Taka to our first story. On the first day of sitting in Parliament, new member of Parliament of the Ibuakwa North constituency, Madame Gifty Chum Ampofo, was sworn in. The Ibuakwa North seat became vacant following the death of former MP Mr. J.B. Dankwa. At the commencement of sitting, the Speaker of Parliament, Mr. Edward Do Ajahu, swore in the new Member of Parliament for Ibuakwa North constituency, Madam Gifty Chum Ampofo. I will uphold the sovereignty and integrity of Ghana. And integrity of Ghana. And that I will preserve. And that I will preserve. Protect. Protect. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. So help me God. So help me God. Members of the House entreated her to work diligently and to contribute her quota towards fruitful deliberations of the House. If she is a good material, as I think she is, I believe even given the limited time, she will blow up. My advice to her, if a member would want to be relevant in this house, would have to be learned by that particular member. I would entreat her to apply herself religiously to the two documents, the Constitution of the Republic and the Standing Orders. It's a pleasure to welcome another female member of parliament to the house. Uh, it has been a challenge to this country to get a critical number of our fairer side in the House of Representation. I think that we as a country have scored another plus in electing a lady to take over from our late colleague and friend J.B. Dankwa Edu. The speaker raised concerns about the safety and security of members of parliament following the spate of attacks, with the recent one being an attack on the MP for Oker and minority chief whip, Mr. Dan Boche. Leadership will take whatever law for reasonable additional steps that are necessary to protect and secure its members and staff. I urge honorable members to take all necessary security precautions in their respective homes was the matter is being addressed. On public business for the week, the Minister for Health, Mr. Alex Sebefia, is expected to brief the House on the state of the only X-ray machine at the Dunkwao Government Hospital. The Roads and Highways Minister, Mr. Inu Safuseni, is also expected to talk about the state of the bridge on the Bogosu Pristia Road. 29 bills, some of which are already at the committee and consideration stages, are expected to be laid before the House. Key among them are the Rights to Information Bill, Maritime Pollution Bill, Plants Builders Bill, and the Petroleum Exploration and Production Bill. In response to a story on GBC 24, the of gender, children and social protection on Monday deployed the police to relocate over 30 children to a foster home at Medina near Accra a fortnight ago on GBC 24 Saturday night program My Journey. 
One of the network's journalists, Shelley Annan, reported from the airport city in Accra where a number of children have taken to begging and living on the streets. Some for more than three years have indulged in prostitution, stealing and even the use of marijuana. This was how the children were living on the streets near the airport city in Ghana's capital, Accra. And to ensure that these children are not left in this condition, GBC 24 carried out two stories. The first one focused on the abuses they have been subjected to over the years. The other one was on what Mother's Day meant to them. <laughs> But the good news is that 10 days after these two stories had been aired, the Gender Ministry and Social Protection, together with the police, went in for the children from their hideouts. The swoop started at the airport city. The children took to their heels upon sighting the heavy police presence, one after the other, the team combed areas of the airport city, picking up the children, but this lasted for about two hours. <laughs> the last stop of the search was at the Tetekwashi roundabout. In all, about 34 children were rounded up. <laughs> Amid cries and the fear of the unknown, the children were sent to the Department of Social Welfare's foster home at Medina. They were calmed down and made to feel at home. Food was ready and dormitories prepared for the children to have a good night rest. One of the children, Kwekwotri, shared his plight. The regional director, DSI, of the Department of Social Development at the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection, Phyllis Senyo, said that children will be screened and those with problems will be catered for. She also added that some of them would be reunited with their families. Others may be there because they are playing to us. Others may be there because they are orphans and nobody is there to care for them. So when we take them today and we screen them, we are going to see those who are in real need and we will support them. Those who will learn trade, those who will go back to school, those that will need to reunite with their parents, will continue to do it until the streets are free of these three children. The Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection says it will continue to carry out this kind of operations to ensure that the incidents of street children are reduced to the barest minimum in Accra. The Ghana Grid Company Limited Grid Co. in partnership with the engineering faculty of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and the Korean government has established a center of excellence in engineering to train staff of the company. The center will, which will admit technicians, engineers and artisans is also opened to the general public. Gridco was established in accordance with the Energy Commission Act 1997 and the Volta River Development Act 2005 for the operation of the National Interconnected Transmission System. Gridco is mandated to provide transparent, non-discriminatory and open access to the transmission grid, especially to power generators and bulk consumers. This mandate calls for prudence and efficiency to face the challenges such as the three-year electricity shortfall and the welfare of the staff to be able to meet their vision. The outgoing chairman of the Senior Staff Association of Great Co., Mr. Norbert Zepasu Anku, implored management to improve efficiency by training members of staff.
The CEO of Gridco, engineer William Amuna, disclosed that under their upgrade plan, the transmission line from Tema to Accra will be changed to enable them to take higher voltages of power. He said an additional transformer has been commissioned at Hall to deal with the low power capacity. It's a responsibility and a duty that at all times, as individuals and as a collective, we try to improve ourselves so that we'll be able to grapple with the challenges of the future. The second thing we want to look at is to build capacity that for a long time to come will continue to be handing over even to our grandchildren and their children. And that responsibility falls on us. Zoom Lion Ghana, a waste management company, has set up recycling plants in all municipal and district assemblies in the country. It forms part of the company's strategy to deal with the plastic waste menace in the country. Zoom Lion Company was set up in 2006 through the initiative of an individual Ghanaian, Joseph Siao Japong, as a subsidiary group of the Jospon Group of Companies. It now has a staff of 2,000 and manages over 85,000 workers in all the regions under various forms of public-private partnership PPP. Currently, it operates in other countries, including Togo, Angola, Zambia, Equatorial Guinea and Liberia. The Volta Regional Manager, Mr. Evans Ewuzi Atha, said the company is also diversifying its services into food crop production, such as cassava, mushroom and vegetables, to create jobs for the youth. The District Chief Executive for Agotime Ziopi, Mr. Michael Ajaho, urged the public to cooperate with Zoom Lion in the maintenance of good sanitation and stop the indiscriminate dumping of refuse and open defecation. The Volta Regional Minister has called for stronger partnership between traditional leaders and political authorities for accelerated development. Speaking at the Tora Asunki Festival at the Bejamse in the Krachi district of the Volta region, Ms. Helena Juan Toso said such a partnership is essential for rapid progress. <laughs> Tora Asunke in Nchumuru language means the oppression is over. The festival is celebrated annually by the chiefs and people of Bejamse clan of Nchumuru to mark their liberation from Ashanti kingdom in the late 1700s. The theme for this year's festival was Indiscipline, a challenge to sustainable democracy. The chief of Bejamse, Nana Obrimpom Kenya, appealed to the youth to be mindful of the utterances to ensure a peaceful election come November. The regional minister, Helen Itoso, called for stronger collaboration between the traditional authorities and politicians to ensure peace before, during and after the election. The chiefs and people of Bejamse expressed their gratitude to the government for relocating the only SHS in the district from its old structure to the new one. They further pleaded for motorable roads in the area. We'll be back here. you most welcome to the business news my name is esther edu ohumeu the ghana police service and the anti-piracy textile tax force impounded two trucks at medina near accra loaded with pirated wax prints the trucks were said to be carrying 400 pieces of imported wax prints this latest arrest comes in the wake of a clampdown on the import and sale of pirated wax prints which have hit hard at the country's textile industry leading to loss of jobs the two vehicles were impounded a Tuesday morning upon a tip-off. The two trucks, which were heading towards the central business district of Accra, were arrested at Medina. A member of the Anti-Piracy Textile Tax Force, Mr. Francis Omari, said the team had a tip-off from Aflau that the two trucks loaded with pirated textiles were heading towards Accra. And we got a tip-off that some trucks are coming from Medina. So immediately we arranged with customs and police. And we went there to arrest the driver. 
We brought them to customs office here, and this morning we came for inspection. We got about 300 pieces of cloth of parated tessiles from first job. The members from all tessiles companies in Ghana, eight, two people from ATR, two from printers, and two from GTP. So they know their designs. We are looking for the, our, uh, the company designs. We got about almost 300 pieces of our company designs. Ghana over the years has been engaged in the fight against pirated textiles. Despite several attempts to halt the sale and import of pirated wax prints, the practice still goes on in the country, with importers adopting all forms of measures to outweigh officials. Last year, the tax force set up to protect the interests and intellectual property of local textile manufacturers destroyed 400 pieces of seized pirated textiles worth millions of CDs as a measure to deter the trade in pirated wax prints. Unilever has declared a dividend of 40 pesos per share. The chairman of Unilever, Mr. Ishmael Yamsen, said the company will continue to focus on high-value brands and maintain a motivated workforce to create value for shareholders. Unilever Ghana is the largest producer and retailer of consumer goods in Ghana. They are producers of soaps such as Geisha, Sunlight, Key Soap, Life Boy, close our paste and Lipton tea bag. Unilever has had a large loyal clientele in Ghana attesting to its ability to deliver value for money. At this year's annual general meeting, the company's profit after tax was 37.7 million Ghana cities, a great improvement over the 2014 figure of 0 0.7 million Ghana cities. Revenue obtained was 518.7 million Ghana cities, representing a 26% growth over 2014. The performance was driven by growth in the company's home and personal care categories, particularly oral skin care and skin cleansing. The operating profit margin improved from 1% in 2014 to 9.7% in 2015. The growth and improved margins resulted in improvement in operating profit from 4.1 million Ghana cities in 2014 to 50.4 million Ghana cities in 2015. The food and beverages category grew by 8.9% over 2014. The board chair of Unilever Ghana, Mr. Ishmael Yamsen, said the company would continue to deliver strong value for the investment that shareholders have made in the company. The profitability was not just because prices were raised all the time, but you have a mix of products that you are selling. You have foods, we have home care, we have personal care. Some products have higher margins. Some products have lower margins. So when you are faced with a certain market situation, you will match the mix. Which products will give you the highest profit without necessarily increasing your margins, your prices? Uh, so that was a major major plank of the of the uh, of the of the performance of the business the managing director of the company miss Mehdi Akutu, attributed the growth to continued innovation promotion and better marketing performance the second was also around uh, significant cost savings initiatives across the entire business so all the way from uh, how we run the factory how we procure our raw materials we sought cost savings um, throughout um, and a lot of that, um, as you mentioned, resulted in good profits at the end of the day. That is also supported in terms of top line continued innovation and promotion activities to drive um, the volumes and the turnover. On the outlook, the company is confident that their business has the right strategies and enablers to achieve its targets for 2016. Beatrice Senaju, GBC24. Aqua. On the interbank market, the dollar traded at 3 CDs 81 pesos, while the pound traded at 5 CDs 49 pesos.
On the commodity board, light crude gained 17 cents to trade at $47.89 per barrel. Your most welcome to insurance news brought to you by SIC Life. Salo PLC says the broken interior bearing of the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah is fully covered by insurance. According to the Chief Operating Officer of Talo PLC, Paul Magdadi, the entire FPSO Kwame Nkrumah and the South Sea equipment in the Jubilee fields are covered by hull and machinery insurance and that pays for any damage to the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah. Some weeks ago, Telugana reported that a part of the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah had been broken, making the FPSO immobile on the high seas. The breakdown led to a drop in oil production from 103,000 barrels per day to around 60,000 barrels per day. It also affected gas supply to the Triable Gas Process Plant, which feeds into the Volta River Authority's thermal plant. The development led to a destabilization in power supply causing blackouts. One of the issues that came up when the turret broke down was the insurance policy covering the FPSO Kwame Nkrumah. According to the Chief Operating Officer of Telo PLC, there is adequate insurance policy covering the entire FPSO Kwame Nkrumah. As operator of the uh, Deepwater Tano and the Jubilee unit area, we have a responsibility to put in place what we call hull and machinery insurance. So it's insurance that's put in place to cover any costs associated with damage to equipment, effectively the FPSO or subsea equipment. So that's something that we put in place uh, and that covers all the partners. So it covers ourselves, our partners, including GMPC. He said Tallow has started the claims process for the damage. Um, so that um, insurance is in place. We've already, on behalf of the partnership, triggered a claim under that insurance, given the damage to the bearing. And we'd certainly anticipate, we're working with the insurers, as you'd expect, um, but we'd certainly anticipate that that insurance um, would fulfill its purpose, which is to cover the incremental costs that are occurring at the moment with the additional vessels we have out in the field to maintain production and also the ultimate uh, repair to the vessel uh, once we decide uh, what is the correct way to go ahead. According to Talo PLC, they are weighing up the available options to fix the broken turret bearing and a solution will be found by the middle of the year. And that's all for business. Thanks for watching. Body aches are bedfellows to domestic chores and other common daily activities of our lives for our mothers, wives and sisters. But there's always Airfag, the powerful and effective quick-acting medicine that will help relieve you of your aches and drive away your pains, like a referee showing the red card to a notorious player. So take Airfag to chase away your pain. Airfag blows your pain away.
Good evening. It's always a pleasure to come your way with the health segment of the news brought to you by FPAC. Blows your pain away. My name is Evans Echampon. The world marks hypertension day today. The focus is on high blood pressure within all populations around the world. The theme is Know Your Numbers. It is estimated that the number of hypertensive adults will increase from 972 million in 2000 to 1.56 billion in 2025, leading to a rise of about 60%, out of which around 10% of the population suffers from secondary hypertension caused by a pre-existing disease. High blood pressure or hypertension is a silent enemy. It manifests itself quietly and wrecks much havoc undetected. There is strong evidence that links our current high salt intake to high blood pressure. The solution is simple. Reduce your intake and watch the numbers go down. Now a Swiss drug maker Roche is working in partnership with the Ministry of Health to improve access to breast cancer and hepatitis health care. The patients will pay a minimal portion of, co of the cost while government and Roche bear the extra cost. The two parties signed an agreement to this effect in Accra. The World Health Organization has identified breast cancer as the second leading cause of cancer deaths in Ghana, with about 2,900 cases being diagnosed annually. At least one out of eight women with the disease die from it. This is attributed to late detection and inadequate diagnosis and treatment. According to the Ghana Health Service, Majority of breast cancer-related deaths are diagnosed late due to lack of early detection and barriers to quality health care. Viral hepatitis is also a major global health issue with the highest rates found in sub-Saharan Africa. About 4 million people in Ghana have the disease with the Upper West Region recording the highest rate of infection. Viral hepatitis is a potentially life-threatening liver infection that is caused by the hepatitis virus. It can cause chronic infections and put people at high risk of death. The agreement between Roche and the Ministry of Health is expected to address the numerous obstacles that breast cancer and hepatitis patients face and improve outcomes in these disease areas. We uh, have both diagnostics um, uh, equipment as well as treatment options. So you heard the minister say it's very, very important that we uh, diagnose the women for breast cancer appropriately so they really know uh, what is it they have because you know there are different uh, forms of breast cancer actually. And then uh, we also want to invest in, in, in education. So there's more medical oncologists who can actually uh, diagnose uh, women. The Minister for Health, Mr. Alex Sewefia, said government is working to ensure that breast cancer and hepatitis patients get early diagnosis and improved treatment. They have specialist drugs in the area of breast cancer and hepatitis, which they want to bring to the Ghanaian people um, in terms of ensuring that we are also getting access to the top of the range drugs that are being used across the world um, but at competitive prices. We are still working to see how much or on what basis the national health insurance can absorb some of these costs. The agreement for breast cancer patients include screening to promote early detection, improvement of diagnostic facilities at treatment centers, training of specialists, development of national treatment guidelines, and access to treatment for patients under the NHIS. The hepatitis agreement also includes disease awareness program, screening, training of healthcare providers in diagnostics, access to innovative treatment, and development of national treatment guidelines. We turn our attention now to the Ashanti region where the Ministry for Gender, Children and Social Protection has begun enrolling 2,000 female porters, also known as CAIA, onto the National Health Insurance Scheme. The objective is to ensure that all persons, especially the vulnerable, have access to essential health care services. The free registration of KIA onto the National Health Insurance Scheme in the Ashanti region took place in the Asokori Mampo municipality. The first batch of headquarters were registered in December last year. 
In all, 1,000 Kayaye from the Malamata and Agbogloshi markets in Accra have been enrolled onto the scheme free of charge to enable them to have access to basic health care services. The Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection is enrolling 2,000 more Kayaye onto the scheme at Asokore Mampo. Because of our social protection mandates, we normally address the needs of vulnerable groups. So we've identified prisoners, orphans, vulnerable persons, including Kayaye, and we are working with the National Health Insurance Authority to facilitate easy registration of them on national health. About 500 aged men and women were also registered onto the scheme at Kumasi. The minister also visited the Kumasi Children's Home, where she interacted with the children and caregivers. Management and staff of the home outlined some of the challenges they face and appeal to the minister for support. And that's all we have for you by way of health news. Brought to you by FPAC. Blows your pain away. International news follows next. <laughs> Never compromise on quality. Choose Kasem always. Kasem, the quality you deserve. Kasem, the nation builder. Success is measured in many ways. Which bank you choose for your business is one of them. Whether you're already established or can see the potential of what could be one day. Barclays Business Banking understands where you want to take your business and what is needed to get you there. A dedicated partner, committed to opening doors to growth and success at every stage of your business journey. Open doors, prosper. Hey, brother. There's an endless road to rediscover oh, The sky comes falling down There's nothing in this world I would do Hey, what if I'm far from home? Oh brother, I will hear you call There's nothing in this world Is he checking you out? Weren't you when I came out? But I am your husband. And he's my fan. The best part is unlike you, my dear. This is a Binaton fan. And its performance is warranted for two years. Binaton products now come with a two-year warranty. No worries. Thanks for staying on. In international news, a brawl broke out in the South African Parliament on Tuesday as security officers were ordered to forcibly remove opposition MPs. Several punches were thrown as the left-wing economic freedom fighters EFF were expelled after trying to stop President Jacob Zuma speaking. In March, a court ruled Mr. Zuma violated the constitution by failing to pay back public money used on his mansion. It says the second brawl in parliament this month. Objects including bottles of water and a hard hat were thrown as the guards tried to wrestle the MPs out of the chamber. South Africa's highest court, the Constitutional Court, ruled that Mr. Zuma violated the constitution when he failed to repay government money used to upgrade his private home.
Libya's Coast Guard have intercepted a dinghy carrying more than 100 African migrants. According to the UN Refugee Agency, nearly 1,000 people have been rescued over the past few days in the Mediterranean Sea, including unaccompanied children. The International Organization for Migration says more than 100 people are believed to have died earlier this month in four shipwrecks between Italy and Libya. We are back with sports news. Don't go away. Time for some updates from happenings in the world of sports. I'm Theophilus Sampa. The Minister for Youth and Sports, Neilante Van der Poy, has announced an end to the payment of qualification bonuses to national teams. This, according to the minister, will bring an end to the issue of why national football teams, especially the Black Stars, are paid qualification bonus, whilst other national athletes are not. The principle is that we don't pay bonuses and things for qualification. When you have qualified for the competition, then we take care of it. But when you are attempting to qualify, we don't. And the truth of the matter, is that a bad precedent has been set in the past with football and that we hope to change. We shall change it because if footballers play qualification for Cup of Nations and they are paid winning bonuses, then at least when they also run to qualify for Olympics must be paid bonuses. Weightlifters, when they qualify for Olympics must be paid bonuses. It should go, it should be the same for everybody. So if you're not doing that for the rest of the disciplines, then we should also take a look at what we're doing for football once again. All the sporting disciplines are the same. The national male weightlifting team, the Black Prince, have received praise from the Ministry of Youth and Sports. The team asked that we can pick one of the five slots in the male division for participation in the Rio Olympic Games. The Olympics starts in August of this year. Hey. These are members of the national male weightlifting team, the Black Cranes. They represented Ghana at the just-ended Africa Championships in Cameroon and picked on one of the five slots available for Africa for the Rio Olympic Games this year. The slot was won through the team qualification system. The points tally of the team made up of David Akwe, Captain Ni Dakudodu, Prince Nyakun, Christian Amwa, Forrest Say, and Teofilos Taki gave Ghana a total of 122 points to finish fourth at the competition. Algeria, Tunisia, Cameroon and Morocco were the other countries that qualified. Interacting with the Youth and Sports Minister and his deputy in Accra, the president of the Ghana Weightlifting Federation, Ben Nunu Mensa, said the feat was unprecedented as it was the first time Ghana had qualified for the Olympics on merit and not on a wild card basis. The deputy Youth and Sports Minister, Mr. Vincent Oponga Samwa, praised them for their efforts. Head coach of the national team, Professor Carl Piers, touched on how they made it. I know that four years ago we had a representative at the Olympics in, in London, uh, Alberta, but uh, that was a wild card. And this was a lot that we earned. We, 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 we got this. Um, we earned this position so we can have a be represented in, in Rio with an earned slot. So as I would say, uh, mission accomplished. The Youth and Sports Minister, Neil Ante van der Poy, promised total support for the team. This has given us a responsibility as a ministry and as a government to do whatever we can to make sure that your preparation towards Rio is not disrupted, it's motivational, it's inspiring, and gives you the adrenaline to want to go out there and prove more people, not only Ghanaians, but the rest of the world, wrong. The only female member of the team, Ruth Bafour, who won three medals at the competition, presented her medals to the minister and his deputy. The team then paid a visit to the offices of their sponsors, Twilliam Ghana Industries Limited. Their officials congratulated them and urged them to strive for excellence. They were presented with some tokens. Thank you very much. 
The head coach of the Ghana Table Tennis team, the Black Lopez, Mr. Antonio Uswansan, has described the Cape Coast Stadium as an excellent venue for sports. Mr. Uswansan described the arena as fit to host international competitions. <laughs> Table tennis was one of the disciplines that was used to officially commission the new 15,000 capacity multi-purpose Cape Coast Stadium. The arena for table tennis is well equipped with the state-of-the-art facilities. An official of the Ghana Table Tennis Association doubles as the head coach of the national team. The Black Lopez says the facility has come at an opportune time. Mr. Anthony Usuansa walks us through the benefits the facility has to the growth and development of the sports in the country. That's an excellent, you know, venue for table tennis. I must say that, you know, we've had challenges, especially with, you know, venues. You know, for some time, you know, this has been a multi-purpose hall. And um, table tennis, we are not, you know, um, the custodian of this very hall. So I must say that when there should be an event, you know, looking at the other disciplines, we need to give way. But table tennis, we need to move as, you know, programmed, you know, for, for the league. So, I believe Cape Coast will serve another venue, which I'm sure, you know, the GTT executive, they are considering moving, you know, the league from Accra to Cape Coast. In, in, in fact, I mean, we're promoting the game. It's a very good place. And you know what? The Chinese, you know, they built the stadium. And they didn't believe that Ghana, we have so many talented players. You know, we went there to, you know, showcase, you know, our talents. And I was surprised. The Chinese are saying that, hey, so Ghana, we have good players like this. And this tells you the level that table tennis has got into. Coach Uswansa said the arena is a standard one that qualifies to host international matches. Looking at, you know, the floor, they're playing on this terra fresh floor. Look at the, the floor that we're playing here. That is an international floor that we can depend upon. So if we have an international match, we can move there to make sure that the players get used to, you know, the floor that is, you know, in Cape Coast. The Cape Coast Stadium is expected to bring a revival of sports in the region, especially among the youth. Thanks for watching. Good evening. Time for some art news. My name is Valerie Danso. The third edition of the Ghana Carnival Celebration has been launched in Accra. The theme for this year's event is My Culture Rocks. Last year's carnival started with a float from a brass boat through to the principal streets of Osu down to the Independent Square for display of traditional dance and culture. This year's carnival will be spearheaded by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts in collaboration with Ghana Society UK. A representative of the society expressed the hope that Ghana's carnival will grow into an international event that will attract groups and tourists from across the world. The Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Mrs. Elizabeth Ofosui-Jari, urged Ghanaians to patronize this year's carnival to make it memorable. Nigeria has a big carnival and this year they are coming on board. Togo is coming, Seychelles is coming. I think that Seychelles is revenging because I led a team of 200 people to their carnival. The first ambassador that the ministry named was Ibrahim Atta. We mentioned John Dumelo as the second. Today, I am privileged to mention our third and last tourism ambassador for the year 2016. And he's in the person of Dr. Abeku Agri, a.k.a. Abeku Santana. The 2016 Carnival is a three-day event starting from 1st July to 3rd July with a float on the first day and a beach jam on the 2nd and 3rd of July. 
That's all in this segment. Have a good evening. Well, before we go, look once again at the headlines. On the first day of sitting in Parliament, new member of Parliament for the Ebuakwa North constituency, Madame Gifty Chum Ampofo, was sworn in. Yes. The Ebuakwa North Mr. seat Ibe. became vacant following the death of the former MP, Mr. J.B. Dankwedu. The Ghana Police Service and the Anti-Piracy Texel Tax Force impounded two trucks at Medina near Accra loaded with pirated wax prints. The trucks were said to be carrying 400 pieces of imported wax print. This latest arrest comes in the wake of the clampdown on the import and sale of pirated wax print which have hit hard at the country's textile industry leading to loss of jobs. Well, Libya's coast guards have intercepted a small boat carrying more than 100 African migrants. The International Organization for Migration says more than 1,000 people are believed to have died earlier this month in four shipwrecks between Italy and Libya. Well, it's a wrap on the news for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with a late edition at 10.30. Good evening. Good evening.